I am dripping. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is going to be a slightly different video than most. I'm actually going to be doing a real-time video on how long it takes to dimension lumber S4S. So in other words, how, did, how long does it take to take this down to thickness and width with all hand tools? So this is a board that I've previously done and this is the board that I'm going to be doing on it. Currently this is a little over one inch thick and I'm taking it down to seven eighths thick uh, by seven inches, actually uh, seven and an eighth in uh, width. So. I'm, to do that, I'm going to be using, number one, a four plane, uh, in other words, the plane that comes before the other planes. Um, it has a very thick cutting rough mouth. I did a video about making one of these a while ago, so I'm not going to go into it in detail. Number two, I'm picking up a number four hand plane. Uh, this is set with a fairly heavy cut, uh, five to eight thousandths of an inch cut, and this will be cleaning up with the four plane left off because the four plane leaves a very rough surface. Then I'll be coming in with my jointer plane. Now particularly, I don't need a jointer this long, but I like working with this. It has a larger mouth, and it is good set up for the board that I need to be working on. But a number seven works great for that. And then I have a smoothing plane, and I have a video on how to set up a smoothing plane. This will take a thousandth of an inch or less, and it is the last plane to touch the wood. Also, we have winding sticks. They're fairly simple to make, uh, but they're great tools, um, particularly when dimensioning stock. These are necessary. I have two marking gauges that I've set up, one for thickness and one for width. That way I don't have to be switching them back and forth. And uh, yeah, two is very nice. You can never have enough marking gauges. And then a square. Uh, a simple square is, uh, well, necessary. So let's dive into this and uh, get to work. So the first thing I want to do is I want to learn about the board. And so I'm going to stick out my winding sticks on here. And these will tell me where there is twist in the board and what needs to be moved. So I'll eye along it and I will see that that corner is high and this corner right here is high. So the board has a bit of a twist this way. I'm going to move them a little bit closer and see where that twist is. Still about the same amount of twist a little bit closer, and still very heavy on that corner. Uh, so that means that, yeah, even when they're just two inches apart, this corner is very, very high. Um, so I'm gonna be actually moving them a little bit closer to see what the rest of the board is like. Wow, that's almost dead accurate. And that's almost dead accurate. So I have a very high spot on the corner right here that I need to take out. And also there is a bit of a cup. So there's a high ridge running right down the middle of this board. I'm going to put it into my tail vise. If you don't have a tail vise, you can do this with Holdfast. I have a video on that as well. It's a fairly simple process, but uh, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the four blade with a cambered iron. And because I know this corner is high, I'm just going to clean up that corner a little bit. Just take that down and that should come close to fixing the problem. It's still a little high, but I think I'll be able to clean that out when we're on, when we're working on it. So I'm trying to get rid of this ridge in the middle. And one thing I want to be careful, I want to actually start by going across the board and uh, transitioning across it. Um, and if I do that, I have a tendency to kind of roll the plane. So I want to be careful that I'm always keeping it nice and flat. So I'm gonna start back here. Now one thing I've learned is that down here I'm going against the grain that way and from here on I'm going with the grain. So you can kind of see this cathedral here. So the split is right there. So from this point over that way I want to be planing that way until I get to there. From this point I want to be planing that way. Which makes this board a little bit difficult but we can work with it. Now that I've done that I'm actually going to take my joiner plane, lay it on here and see if I have any change this way. And I can see that I have a bit of a gap in here, so that means that it's slightly bellied. So I take out a little bit more on either end. And also you can tell that I've hit this middle area fairly heavy and haven't hit this edge very heavily. So I think one more pass with this, and we should be good. Now you can see 
that I changed angles down on this end, and I'm going to keep this angle until I get to the middle, and then just kind of work on this fanned out area and switch over and do this way. That way I'm not tearing out as much. Now I'm blowing out this side, and I could fix that by sliding along it, but I'm going to be planing that off in the future, so I really don't care about the blowout on this side yet. Oop. Got a chip cut in the blade. Massive blowout right there. I'm going to be cutting about two inches off the length of this board. I always like to leave my dimensions very large if possible, and this board is about two inches longer than it needs, so I could cut two inches off of here or an inch off of either end when I'm all done. But uh, yeah, that was a far more blowout than I expected, so oh well. Such is life. Clear the chips out of the mouth. You change this a little bit. Just clean off that high spot. Now it's learning a little bit. Put this on edge. Fairly flat. I still have a bit of a high spot right here. And go back to this. I'm high on either end and a bit of a low spot here. So if I have a low spot here, that means that this area here is really, really low and I don't want to hit it anymore. But I do want to clean up these ends a little bit more. So I'm just going to hit the ends. I'm not hitting the middle at all, so I can kind of level that out. And again, I'm just being really, really rough, taking some massive cuts. And that looks pretty good. I have a bit of a scuff here. High spot, I mean. Scuff? I don't know if that's a good word. <laughs> Hit that. Just taking a couple life spots, light spots to take that down. Bit of a high spot in the middle of the board. And that's relatively flat. I'm seeing a lot of gaps, but that's because of the scallops that have been created by the four plane. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab the number five. And I'm going to kind of clean this up. And you'll hear as I slide along, it goes That's because it's hitting all the high spots. And I'll work from one side to the other, all the way across the corner. And that plane's clogging up. This one, the mouth is a bit too tight, and so every now and then, the mouth itself clogs up. Which, I need to open this mouth up just a little bit, because I usually use it for heavy cuts. I don't use it as much for a fine shave. So when I'm doing heavy cuts like this at the beginning, it occasionally likes to clog up. So let me lighten the cut just a little bit. And continue on. And I'm listening to it as I go. I'm listening for when I have a nice, consistent cut all the way across. And you still hear it goes That's a little bit better. A little bit of a skip at the beginning. All the way across again. Now, let's learn about the board again. Ah, it's looking better. Mm -hmm. 
nice and flat. Let's see if we have any twist. I want to make sure that if I have any curls sitting out here on the side, that they don't lift up the twist, the uh, winding stick. And let's eyeball it. There's a little bit of a twist, not much. I think that corner is just a little bit high still. Yeah, that corner is high. Yep, I gotta clean out this corner. Now one of the things you want to be careful about is that when planing off the end, you don't want to be pushing down here when you go off. Otherwise, you're just going to be nicking this end off and this end is going to get lower and lower. So when you get to the end, you either want to lift your hand up and just push or learn to transfer your weight. When you're back here, push down here. When you get out here, you're pushing down here and this is basically doing nothing. Some people even like to lift up at the end. So let's see what that did. Let's see. Oh, no, that's happiness. Nice and flat. Nice and flat. Let's see if we have any bow from end to end. That looks pretty good. So, now I know this is pretty darn flat, so I'm going to use this to just guarantee it. Unfortunately, I left this with a heavy cut. I forgot to change it, but that's not a problem. Oop. Against the grain right at the end. So I'm actually going to lighten this cup up, cut up a little bit. Do it again. Not quite that light. There's that. And I know that this board is basically dead flat, but I'm going to come in with my smoothing plane. Which is set very heavy right now. And that feels like glass. Perfectly flat, perfectly smooth, and we're ready to move on. So next thing is I'm going to do the edge, and I want this to be my reference edge. It's my reference face and my reference edge. So let's put this in the tail vise, face vise, and I'd go on from there. Now I'm going to start with my number five, because I don't want to take off much of any thickness, and this will allow me to learn a little bit about the surface. You hear it kind of skip, 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 skip. And you can see on the edge here how it's getting this edge and not this edge because it's naturally tipped. And it was something I didn't check beforehand because I could obviously see it. That this whole surface is tipped this way. It's something you kind of get an eye and a feel for over time. Knowing and seeing what is square. Oops. Didn't quite put enough on that. going until I get a relatively consistent cut from one end to the other. And because this side over here is my surface side, I'm going to put the square on there. And I can tell that my blade has uh, tipped that way. So I can have two choices. I can either change my lateral adjuster, 
so that I'm cutting heavier on this side than that side. Or I can just focus on it and either try and lean it one way or the other, or just put a little bit more pressure on one side than the other. And so if I slide it over this way, more of the plane weight is on this side of the board, so it will naturally want to turn that way a little bit. So that's what I usually like to try and do. And you'll see that it naturally takes a slightly heavier cut on the side it's leaning towards. Let's check it. And by George, that is perfect. They're pretty close. I just need to do one more little right here. Now, I know that that is fairly darn flat. I'm going to bring in the joiner just to make sure. The joiner isn't taking a quite heavy cut right in the middle. There we go. Now I'm taking an even cut end to end, which lets me know that this is nice. Final check. Dead on, all the way across. So, now I know that I have a reference surface and a reference edge. I can put a little mark on here. That lets me know every measurement I do in the future has to be off of these two sides. I know that this is 90 degrees to this side. Both of those are perfectly flat. If all my measurements are off of this, they'll be perfect. So, let's next move on to the opposite side. Some people like to go to the opposite face. I like to do the opposite side. So. Grab my marking gauge, and I'm going to learn a little bit about this. I'm just going to put this mark all the way along here, and I don't have to take off much, if anything, on this edge, whereas this edge I have to take off quite a bit. I'll do the same thing on this side. Really darn close to the edge over there, and thicker, 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 thicker. So I take off about an eighth inch on this end, and almost nothing over here. So let's put that back in here. Second verse, same as the first. Ought to get better, but man, it's so much fun. And we're just going to start, because I know this end is high, I'm just going to start here. And every pass, I'm going to go a little farther. Now I feel like I'm bellying out, and I want to see my mark. Getting close there. And I'm just going down until that marking gauge line basically disappears, which is a little bit more here and all the way across. Just to double check all my figures, I'll grab the jointer. Take a nice cut from one end to the other. And that edge is done. So now I have three edges done. Let's do the final thickness. So for the final thickness, I'm going to grab my other marking gauge, and I'm going to stay with the fence on the side that I've already dimensioned. And I'm going to make a light cut pretty close there. And I'll do it on the end. Got a lot to take off on this end. And very little to take off on the other end. Got a little over an eighth inch right down here. About an eighth inch there. And a little less than an eighth inch. And I have about a sixteenth inch down here. So the nice thing about this is it tells you very quickly what you need to take off more on. So I can tell that on this corner here, I have very little to take off. On this corner, I have almost everything to take off. And it kind of tapers down from corner to corner. So I like to put the, well, I like to put the fat side on the far end for me, but unfortunately all the grain is going away from the fat side. Mostly, let me see. Actually, no, there's the bow. So all the grain on either side is rising up towards the middle. And the middle point's right about here. So if I plane this way, this area will look good, and this area will look bad. But if I plane that way, this area will look good, and this area will look bad. So 
because this is larger, I'm going to plane in that direction and uh, I'll just have to be careful down here. So let's put this in. And the second verse, same as the first. Actually, this is the second, this is the fourth verse, same as the first. <laughs> Something like that. So now I'm going to grab the four plane again. And this is where I have to take off a lot of material because I have to take everything down to the edge. So I have to take more than a sixth, more than an eighth of an inch at this corner, about an eighth of an inch here, about a sixteenth of an inch here, and almost nothing on this corner. So I'm going to kind of stay away from this corner for right now and just start down here. Yeah, and I can tell I'm going to be going heavily against the grain here. So because this is a four plane, I'm actually going to, uh, <clears throat> ooh, excuse me, I'm going to transition across the grain starting down here. And I'm kind of aiming, aiming into the grain so that I'm not taking off as much. And I'm really not caring too much about my style or quality at this moment because I have so much to take off that I'm just cutting. And you can tell how it's cutting here on the edge, it's skipping, and it's going, it's cutting in deep on the other side. At this point, my grain is switching. And because it's, it's cutting in heavy on this side and skipping to the other side, I know there's a bit of a belly in here, which I was expecting, but. There we go. And I'm not gonna even touch this corner yet because I have a lot more to do over there. In this very corner, it just reverses grain again. So I'm going to kind of play with it. Take it down close to that mark. You see how I kind of rotated from going across this way to just going across and doing from here to here, here to here, here to here, and got a little longer as I'm now going all the way across on this side. Now let's look at my marking gauge line, see how close I am. About a sixteenth of an inch, about a sixteenth of an inch, a little more than a sixteenth inch, sixteenth of an inch, pretty darn close. Very close, 16th of an inch, 16th of an inch, something about around a 16th of an inch. So I've gotten most of these edges down to about a 16th of an inch. This is the highest spot right on this corner. So I think another two passes and I should be good. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, going across the grain. Until I get to here, I'm kind of going directly across the grain. And then I'm Turning back to another 45 degrees on this side. <sighs> yeah, one more good pass. Except for I'm a little heavy right here, but that's where I transition. I also want to make sure that I'm still staying fairly flat across. Sometimes there's a tendency to belly it or leave a bit of a concavity, but it's looking pretty good. So let's do one more good pass. And I'm just looking at every scoop I make, making sure that my scoops line up nicely. and then I get every spot I need for. And still a bit heavy here, but pretty close over here and pretty close over here. I want to leave that marking gauge line. I'm good here. I want to leave that marking gauge line. I want to take it down to the marking gauge line with the next one. I need to go a little heavier here. A 
little bit more. And I'm just getting everything down close to the marking gauge line. I don't want to run over the marking gauge line. I just want to come close to it. And I think that's about it. There we go. Now, we want to flatten this out. So this is about its thickness, and you can see how I am sweating profusely. You can see the drops around here. I love that. It's a good workout. Gets the blood pumping. And you hear it's just skipping over the tops of all those high points. I think I clogged it again. When I'm doing all these skipping, this small mouth tends to clog. One of these days I'll open it up, but oh well. It doesn't take too much to fix it. Use my fingers just to test my depth. Right there. There we go. And I'm going to use this, be checking the edge here, to see where I need to go a little heavier. I think I need to go a little heavier right here in the middle. You can tell I'm working from one side to the other, doing about an inch and a half wide pass each time. Check this marking gauge line. Oof, getting close. I know that when I hear the skipping stop, that's when I am probably pretty close to my marking gauge line because of how far I went down with the scrub plane or four plane. So now that we've gotten that cleaned off, I'm gonna come in with the joiner. And I probably don't need this except for there's a little bit of a scuffle mark. It drifts a little bit. And this should get me pretty much right on my marking gauge line. Perfect, perfect. Dead on. Okay, so then I can come in with the smoothing plane, finish this sucker off. There you have it. Four side dimensioned S4S board. I only have 60 more to go. Booyah, happiness. So there, and I have on here the reference side and reference face so that I know that all my marking can come off of this corner in the future. <sighs> so I hope you like that. This is why I love hand tool woodworking. Um, just being able to simply go through things and do it by hand and make it fun. I'm not looking for perfection, I'm looking for fun. And so this is enjoyable to me and I really, really like it. Uh, someday in the future, who knows, I might get a, uh, a thickness planer, but uh, for now, this is great. And really, I'm just using five and $10 planes that I found at garage sales and junk stores and have restored. So it's really not that big of a deal um, or that expensive at all to jump into it. Even if you buy a higher end planes, you can still do it for a reasonable price. And you still get this good workout. 
I love it. So that's about it for today. I hope you like this. Uh, if you did, please hit like and think about subscribing. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are one of the main reasons why this channel is still running today. So thank you for that. If you want to find out more about Patreon, you can click on the link over here. And uh, if you uh, did like this video, you might like one of my others. And until next time, have a wonderful day.